Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. Real Estate Coaching Radio is the nation's number one daily radio show for realtors who demand authentic real-time coaching. Get ready for fluff-free, unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what's truly working to get you into action, helping others, and making money now in today's real estate market. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we are back. Julie, welcome to today's show. It is, uh, what is it, September the 9th? Yes, indeed. It is the middle of the week, and that means for me, lots of coaching calls, podcast, premier coaching, and... Uh, Whatever else. Plate spinning. Plate spinning. Baby tossing. Juggling. <laughs> yes. And all that's before noon. Homeschool. Ugh, I know. We've gotten so much done today, though. Yeah. And, well, it's, well, you have so. mostly. I've just been working. <laughs> well, By the yeah. way, this is a test. Yes. What is special about six days from now? Six days from now. Oh, my gosh. She has to look at the freaking oh, calendar. No, <laughs> I was no. no. Sure that, listeners, yeah, that's our anniversary. Duh. D- listeners, she literally just had to I look just at wanted the... to make sure that I was on the ninth and... Uh, was doing my math right. Uh, really? I've been doing first grade math all day, so I check myself, okay? <laughs> I'm checking my addition. Yep. So it's six yes, days. Yes, happy almost anniversary. Okay, so in six days, yes. how long have we been married? 29. Okay. Well, at least you didn't have to look that one up. Let me get my book out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so listeners, we were talking about starting yesterday. We were talking about how to have massive motivation uh, going into next year. And this is a theme that is incredibly important that you internalize because I have to say there are so many headwinds right now to being motivated. So many reasons why, you you know, people are going to, excuses rather, they're going to use just not to really take any bold actions into the end of the year. And you've got to really check yourself on that because it's not just going to be real estate folks. It's going to be every single possible avenue and place you could possibly ever look. People are all going to be saying, you know, it's been a rough year. Maybe you should take some downtime. Stop and smell the roses. I'm not doing anything till after the holidays. Yeah, That's that coming. and see exactly, and all that. Here's and here's ultimately the price you're going to pay. Not only are you going to basically make it so you have a very lean end of the year financially. For the most part, that means your kids are going to basically be getting you know a box of rocks, right? You're not going to have the money and the cash flow to really do what you'd want to do. But the real hardship you're going to create for yourself is going to be going to next year. And it's this little game that Julie and I play that hopefully, I know a lot of you guys have internalized this too because I read your messages. But you have to ask yourself, if you don't have the, you know, essentially the cash flow, the savings, the quality of life, if you don't have everything you want right now, you have only one person to say, uh, to blame and that is the past version of you. So if you're not liking your present circumstance, you need to think back to 90 days, six months ago, a year ago, and that past version of you wasn't willing to do what they didn't want to do and they didn't want to do it at the highest level. In other words, they were not willing to actually make themselves a little uncomfortable, to work a little bit extra harder so the future version of themselves uh, would have a better, you know, have it better in terms of all those things. And, And that's the question you need to be asking yourself now. So we have effectively... Three and a half months left this year. And as we told you guys yesterday, that does not amount to three and a half months worth of working days. It amounts to really less than 70 working days, seven zero, more like 60 working days to the rest of this year. So you've got to ask yourself, will the, you know, version of you who's uh, popping the champagne cork as we turn from 2020 to 2021, will that person be thanking the present version of you? In other words, when they're looking at their checking account balance and they're thinking about the Christmas they were just able to celebrate or whatever holiday you celebrate with their family and loved ones, will they be saying, well, this was the greatest holiday ever? Oh, and I'm so excited about 2021 because I've got all this momentum, all these listings. Or is that version of you going to be going, damn, Bob, why the heck were you so lazy in September? <laughs> you know, so you always got to be thinking like that because it makes it kind of fun and it makes it very personal. So will the, uh, you know, is the present version of you tickled pink with the past version of you? And will the future version of you be looking at the present version of you and praising or swearing that person, uh, you know, about what the, the actions that person did or didn't take? Yes, and I I would even add to that, those of you, and there's a lot of you right now who are having your best month ever, your best quarter ever, your best run of things. You've got so many pendings. I mean, I talk to them all week, as do you. 
I think they're also in danger of hitting the complacency wall because they've been so busy for so long this year. I've been talking to a lot of agents today that are kind of feeling that way. But you cannot let off the gas. What you do fourth quarter, and yes, technically we're not quite in fourth quarter, but we might as well be considering you have maybe 60 work days left. So you have to think of it that way. The work you do now greatly determines your trajectory starting, you know, for first quarter of next year. And so, yeah, you've got to do what you want to do in the holidays. That's great. We want you to have fun. But it's going to be a lot more fun when you keep all those pendings going. The reason that we've amped up, normally we uh, put on the pressure for, um, you know, building your inventory and building your momentum for the following year. We usually start that at the beginning of fourth quarter. But the reason we started it at the uh, beginning of September this year was because the holidays are going to be compounded with the COVID fears, which are going to be compounded with the election Mickey Mouse, which are going to be compounded with financial unrest, which are going to be compounded with... What? An alien invasion. I mean, who the hell yeah. knows, right? This is a crazy year. We got all that. So you got to work. That means we're going to have to really, as a group, collectively, you know, we have, this is the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals, at least in the United States. We have tens of thousands of you who are going to be listening live and listening in replay. Collectively, we have to be working towards the future version of us, you know, giving praise to the current version, which means you're going to have to really shake yourself loose of the built-in Uh, complacency that is this time of year. The headwinds are going to be happening uh, always in fourth quarter. And the excuses all of you are going to have not to actually work in fourth quarter. I get it. It's just omnipresent. It's everywhere. But you need to fight against it because here's the secret. And we tell you guys this every day. So hopefully you're not (laughs) hearing this for the first time. Every single top producer knows that the, you know, if you want to have a fantastic following year, you really have to be focused on building your listing inventory this time of year because this is the easiest time of year to generate listing leads. This is the easiest time of year to actually list motivated sellers. In the spring is, yes, there are more opportunities, but your competition goes through the roof. There's so many agents that will mentally and emotionally and then financially check out this time of year. Your competition basically is asleep at the wheel. Yep. If there was ever a good time to learn how to actually pick up the phone and start to prospect, proactively lead generate, it's now. So carry this momentum and don't back off of it and be very clear about what work is and what work isn't. Work isn't doing anything that's passive. You got to not give yourself that hall pass anymore. Work isn't doing anything that's basically um you know, really mostly social media stuff and making videos and all the rest of that. That's not real work. That's the stuff you can choose to do after you've done the real work every day, but you've got to do the real work first and you've got to see that other stuff for what it is, which is basically, you know, fanciful, uh, you know, what would you even call it, Julie? I don't even want to use any. Pretty shiny things. Pretty shiny things. Distractions, creative uh, creative avoidance is what we call it Mm -hmm. in coaching sometimes. That's right. It's We know all the time you guys spend on social, hoping and praying that someone's going to raise their hand and say, come list my house, is time that you are, you know, frankly, you need to allocate towards things that are going to put you directly in front of a motivated seller. And that's what we teach you to do in our coaching program. And that's what I want all of you guys, if you're not in the free coaching program, text the word survival to 3199. And that is a program we started as a, you know, frankly, as a reaction to COVID back in March. And we were only planning on doing it through the summer. Well, it's been so popular. We've had thousands of you join that we're going to continue to do it. Now, it is a shadow, a whisper of the normal premier coaching program. But it does give a lot of you, frankly, it gives all of you the really the energy and the motivation, the direction that you're going to need. It's you know 90 day massive action plan, the ultimate agent survival guide, the real estate treasure map. There's so many amazing things that you get for free, and you get a daily semi private coaching call every single day with a free coaching program. So text the word survival to three one nine nine six. All right, so we're gonna finish up the points we started yesterday. Um, and then we have uh, a real drill down goal setting exercise that maybe we won't be able to get started on t- until tomorrow, but it's going to give you again the direction that all of you guys may not know you need, but you do uh, to have a fantastic end of the year and an even better start to the following year. Yes, that's right. So if you missed the points uh, from yesterday, you can get caught up because we are starting on, I think, point number five, media free, protect your mindset at all costs. Look for things, and unfortunately, you do have to be proactive about this. Look for things that uplift you instead of things that bring you down. For example, just stay out of the whole political thing. There's nothing good about that. You're, you know, 
you're never going to win. You're always going to be 50% wrong, no matter what your beliefs are. So I don't know why people are spending so much time but on that. You, you said something that's really important, and yeah. I don't want to spend too much time on it, because, again, I don't even want to deal Me with either. politics. Nope. But the problem with being anything other than a Republican, where you basically are essentially neutral, is that you're, as Julie just said, you're going to alienate, whether you know it or not, 50% of the, or more, depending on where you live, you're going to alienate at least 50% of the population who you otherwise could have been doing uh, business with. So for you to politicize your business is insanity. Yeah. It's the worst thing you can do, especially in a year like this. Yes. And I have to say, Tim, I was mortified the other day on one of the agent Facebook pages because I go there to see what they're talking about, what their challenges and interests are, of course. And there was this post where this agent had it like a badge of honor that they walked out of a seller's house because they discovered they didn't have the same political views. Just, and, I, and I thought, like, how is that even remotely appropriate? But even though I was mortified at the post, I was also very proud of most of the agents that responded who also said, why was that even a thing? If Your job is to sell the house. It's well, not to you know get into politics. But guys, ultimately, doesn't matter what political side of the fence they lean on. Exactly. If you are in alignment with your highest and truest purpose in this planet, which is being of service to other people, you're never going to find anybody. I mean, Julie and I have been married for three decades. We met in high school, and we don't agree on everything. We don't. And do you really? So I'm going to, you know, my stance is going to be unless I find people that think exactly like I think, I'm not going to do business with them. That's what the politics have normalized, this insane that absolutely makes no sense, which puts all of us way out of alignment with our highest and truest purpose, which is truly being of service to other people. That's exactly it. So stay out of it, okay? <laughs> what should you be reading and listening to? Motivational books, podcasts, you know, things that are exciting to you, things that are interesting. Um, Tim, we got a, a catalog for the great courses that, um, you know, you and, your, and uh, me and your mom are going through to pick out some things. So she's going to do a painting class. And then there's some um, other things that she's interested in. I'm learning Spanish with Zoe. That takes up a good part of my brain every day. But here's the thing. When you are not media free, you are largely out of control of your own mindset. Somebody else is literally controlling your mind. And well, we, I don't think that's healthy for people. When you listen to what you want right. to listen to, your podcast, when you read what you have control of, then you are in control of your mindset. And that's so important with so many things happening around you that you can't control. I just flipped on Bloomberg because someone sent me a link, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna read this, um, for example, this is what how pernicious the news has become and how sneaky it's become about basically messaging and trying to trigger people's emotions. Here's, it's, it, this is under a, a title called Prognosis. AstraZeneca halts Oxford COVID vaccine trial and signal of risks ahead. The patient's illness casts a pale over the push for a quick vaccine. Okay, now here's the thing you might not know. And I didn't know this either, right? And I'm again, now how many of you have your political feelers out thinking that Julie and I are going to be political? Ain't going to do it, so stop looking for it. But how many different um, of these pharma companies are trying to make, make a vaccine for COVID? It's not one. It's not just AstraZeneca. I think it's, it's like 80-something. Exactly. Like On all over the world. They're trying to make it in Russia. They're trying to make it in Germany. They're trying to make it all over the world. And do you think all these pharma companies basically are exactly at the same place in terms of how soon their vaccine is going to be uh, ready to release? So the vaccine and that is supposedly uh, ready for prime time at the end of this year uh, is going is been tested. It's been researched. It's ready to launch. And that some people want to politicize that. Look, I'm not going to be the first one in line for the vaccine. That's for damn sure. You know, I'm going to wait for them to come out. But with, you're still glad it's happening. I'm still glad it's happening. But we should yeah. all be celebrating that. And yet some people want to politicize that. Well, and there's there's also various different types of vaccines. So just because one of them is running into trouble and doing something about it doesn't mean the rest of them are. My point being is when you read these headlines, and this is on Bloomberg, and, and definitely Bloomberg is yeah. a little bit, well, it is very left-leaning. But still, I go there for news because, frankly, they have a lot of good news. But when you look at uh, their headlines, you know, it's all drawn, to assuming, they're all written assuming that you're not going to actually read the article. And I, I mentioned this to you guys yeah. a couple days ago. That's the reason, in case you didn't realize it, that articles, the subject titles. line, the titles, thank you, I was struggling there, have gotten longer and longer because they know you're not going to read. They know you're going to scan the news on your uh, mobile device. You're just going to read the headline. Mm -hmm. And if you do open the article, do you notice how almost all articles nowadays have two or three bullet points that summarize the whole article at the very top? Guys, it is not news. It is propaganda. What we grew up with, if you're Julie and I's age, 
really, if you're all the way down to probably about 35, you had a taste of what real, well, sort of real news was like. Yeah. It isn't what we're experiencing now on either side of the fence. So avoid all forms of media. And what do you replace it with? You replace it with basically things that are going to fill your own cup, things that are going to motivate you, things that are going to put you in alignment with your highest and truest purpose, which is, of course, being of service to other people. Listen to podcasts that motivate you. How many of you guys are going to start meandering into political podcasts? Avoid it, Mm -hmm. right? How about this? You can always pick up the phone and start contacting your centers of influence and past clients using our scripts and being of service to them. Do things that are actually going to make it so the future version of you is loving and praising the current version of you the future version of you around the holidays is going to go get a tattoo of the september what is it ninth version of you on you know on their arm that's i'm i'm trying to make you guys laugh but you get the gist of it yeah that's exactly right so and again that gets you back into control in an otherwise out of control world largely so point number six it's easier to move fast versus moving slow avoid the plague of getting ready to get started just follow directions and do the work. I love this point because I really feel this and I see this with coaching clients and I see it with myself. Like the more you have uh, really packed into your schedule, assuming it's the right things, meaning dollar productive work. So just to make sure we've gone over this list on every podcast, that means generating leads in the first place, lead follow-up, pre-qualify, present, negotiate, close. The more you can put that into your schedule and execute on that every single day, the further ahead you're going to get faster. Now, maybe you don't have anybody to pre-qualify today and you don't have any presentations. Guess what? Go back to square one, which is lead generation in the first place. I, so I it's get, very simple if you just follow it that way. I get texts from some of you guys from time to time and you're going to ask me, basically a question that leads me to well i know for a fact that you're just procrastinating and what like which tim which crm should i use tim what yeah. you know what auto dialer should i use where should i be getting my expireds tim how does this company compare to that company here's here's the suggestion for all of you stop worrying about making a mistake and just move forward make a mistake and correct along the way that's the only way to actually be successful at anything in life Because you're never going to have all your questions answered. The more questions you find yourself asking, the less likely you are to take any action. And what you're doing is you're just procrastinating. And you're making it worse. You're compounding the anxiety and the fear you have of doing the activity the longer you wait to actually do it. So there is no one solution for everybody. You know, our coaching program and the system we give you as part of our coaching program is about as close to a one solution that's humanly possible to create. And, but the reality of it is that even with our system, we want you to modify it depending on your market conditions and depending on your, mar- your sale price and all that ever so slightly. But going and deviating and spending all your time researching and getting ready to get started just simply means the future version of you is not going to be too happy about the current version of you. That's right. So remember that done is better than perfect. And you know our coaching clients, Tim, who actually were doing a lot about expired Palooza about a week ago leading up until They're now. happy. <laughs> Man, the appointments they were setting, I'm so proud of them. Me and too. I guarantee you, not a single one of them stuck to word by word scripting. They were terrible. You know they it were. It doesn't Who cares? matter though. They did it done <laughs> was right. better than perfect. They, I right. guarantee you none of them asked a hundred percent of the questions of the script. Didn't mm-hmm. happen. But you know what? By doing it, you have discovered that the script is there if you need it. You can do some of the script when you get there. You do not have to be perfect. Done is better than perfect. So words to live by. Okay. That's point number seven. Do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level, especially this time of year. And you know, in the Harris Rules book, Tim, we actually break down how to do what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. What does that even mean in all of these areas that are critical? So we we took lead generation. How do you actually do that at the highest level? That's all in the book. Right. So guys, get Harris Rules. It's a perfect early holiday present for everyone you know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe a real estate license would be a good, you know, precursor. But Harris Rules, it's got almost 400 five-star reviews on Amazon. It's available at Barnes & Noble and everywhere else you can possibly imagine. Um, Yeah. I mean, Julie? Yeah. Well, that's my, my, you know, research version of it. But look at what it actually says. There's three parts to that quote. Right. So let's drill down on that, right? Doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level, okay? Mm -hmm. So the whole phrase is, and this is something Julie and I essentially wove together almost by accident, but it's if you ever want if you want ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life, learn to do and learn to essentially live by doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Now, here's the where it all basically rubber meets the road. What is it that you don't want to do the most? I want you guys mentally to write those things down. 
What do you not want to do the most? And here's the answer. All of you, if you're being completely honest with yourself, it, you're going to either take the easy way out of answering the question or you're going to be honest. So the 10% that are being honest, here are the thoughts that you're having. You don't want to pick up the phone. You don't want to do proactive lead generation. You don't want to pre-qualify. You don't want to you know, do the real work. You don't want to actually make yourself uncomfortable. You don't want to put yourself in a position to hear the word no. You don't want to do something that requires real skill and might make yourself uncomfortable. That's what you don't want to do. And the list is endless, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But that's the honest truth. But that's the truth. Those are the things. And, and the irony of it is, is all the things that you don't want to do are the things that are going to put you in a position to help the most people the quickest and make the most money. Yes. So do you guys get the irony of this? The very things that you don't want to do the most are the things that are going to give you and your family the greatest benefit. And yet you want to basically be told and lied to that you can buy your leads from Facebook that you can do a bunch of TikTok videos. You want to be told and lied to knowingly that you don't have to do real work and ever make yourself uncomfortable. And it's no wonder why 85% of all real estate agents fail within two years or less. Yes, that's it. So that's just the first part is do what you don't want to do. And the second part is when you don't want to do it, which, you know, if we're being honest, is pretty much all the time. But here's the, here's the rub. Do your best to do it at the highest level possible. So there's a difference between you choose any of those categories, right? Let's say lead follow up because most of them avoid that too, which is weird because they also think they need more leads. But let's just say lead follow up. Okay, well you can do it at a high level with the intention to actually set an appointment, or you can just kind of BS your way through and leave a few messages like, "Hey, just checking on you," or you can actually use a script. Okay, which we teach in Premier Coaching. A good message has who you are, why you're calling, be specific, and what you want the person to do about it. That's doing it at a high level. Same thing with a listing presentation, okay? Some of you guys avoid prospecting because you're afraid you'll set up a listing presentation where you actually have to compete, okay? And the reason you do that is because you're not sure you can do it at a high level because you have yet to develop the skill to actually be competitive. You see how it's all just kind of circling the toilet bowl at this point. Right. And this is these are the thoughts that you guys really need to be honest with yourselves about. Are you late for Premiere? Not yet, but I'm oh, getting there. You're about to be late for Premiere. Yeah. So be you guys gotta really, really truthful be truthful with yourselves as to why ultimately the, what's the price you're paying for not really drilling down in your real estate business, not ultimately adopting the lifestyle and you know, the working lifestyle of doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Do you like how things are working out for you? Do you like your financial position? You're making a lot of noise, lady. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Do you like the, the, are you looking forward uh, to your, the end of the year with enthusiasm? Or if you're being honest, are you looking forward to it with fear and trepidation, right? Here's an interesting thought. Many people do not think more than 30 days ahead. In other words, if they have 30 days, maybe 60 days of uh, some resemblance of financial security, for the most part, people actually are going to become complacent. They don't do it consciously. They do it subconsciously. And what essentially, hopefully, what COVID did when we saw this big shutdown and, you know, thankfully, the government stepped in, basically gave you guys a lifeline. But the reality of it is, is that that should have shocked you out of complacency and realizing that this lifestyle that maybe this work lifestyle that many of you guys have adopted of hoping and praying that somehow the real estate gods are going to magically deliver to you a closable deal. I mean, have you not realized yet that that is an act of futility? You're going to just drive yourself insane and you're never actually going to have any sort of financial stability. You're never actually going to be able to, you know, plan for any sort of brighter financial future. You're always going to be carrying this unnecessary amount of stress and anxiety around on your backs simply because of the fact that you're still internally struggling with not essentially with doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Guys, the reality of it is, is that the longer you do something, the better you get at it, but the harder it is to stay focused on it because you get bored at it because it doesn't present a challenge, right? Some of you are experiencing that because you've been essentially, and this is the minority of you granted, but because you've been doing the don't want to, when, you know, doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level lifestyle. And that is another little place where you can allow some complacency to slip in because you then lose the skill set you had. I had a coaching call with somebody, actually probably this conversation I had maybe three times yesterday. 
And these are people that were joining our EXP group, or maybe there was one of you guys, a coaching client, who knows. And the gist of it was, is they started out by prospecting. They built a very profitable real estate business by prospecting. And then they got seduced into believing that they had to start building a team and buying leads. And their conversation with me is generally uh, about how do they, you know, un essentially take uh, – a course direction and redo their business around things that are going to create the most profit. Because as we have been warning all of you guys, when you do a lot of these marketing things that cost money, that have no assurance of return on investment, let alone a profit, and you compound that with others, uh, you know, multitudes of dumb ideas, basically, you're going to essentially spend yourself into oblivion. And that's what's happening to so many of you. You don't know it yet because there was this little reprieve that happened. You know, maybe it was, um, you had a huge uptick in the last 60 days, which I know a lot of you did. Um, thank God, right? But the reality of it is there's no assurance that there's going to be another resurgence like that. And if you're still carrying all these massive high fixed costs for all these things that are just gimmicks, you've got to see them for what they are. I had a fun conversation with a really great um, agent in Michigan named uh, Kevin Yoder yesterday. And he and his brokerage are joining Julie and I's EXP group. And by the way, if you guys want to join Julie and I's EXP group, text me directly at 512-758-0206, 512-758-0206. If you're just looking for information about EXP, we've made that super easy for you. Um, just text the word EXP to 31996. Text the three letters EXP to 31996, and we'll text you back a nine-minute video, which will answer all your questions about EXP. But here's the question, the conversation I had with, you know, Kevin, he made this point. He said a lot of agents make a huge mistake when they get, you know, he's a seasoned, long-term, very successful rock star agent, right? So he has perspective and he knows, he knows the good, bad, and ugly of this industry, especially when it comes to selling marketing gimmicks to agents. And he said one of the, the worst things that agents do without knowing it is they believe that they have to start a geographic farm. Now, there is a place... For geographic farms, let's just focus on here the bottom line facts. What nobody tells you, not just with geographic farming, but with all these gimmicky ideas, is that there is no guarantee when you're going to experience any kind of even a slight return on your investment. And you're probably going to end up having to spend, just for direct marketing, for example, $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 per month for at least a year before you pick up one single listing. The same goes with radio ads. The same goes with all these other types of things that you guys are looking for because you're so in love with the idea of there being a silver bullet or maybe several silver bullets that will make it so you never have to learn the skills necessary to do the real work in real estate. But again, what you do is you end up spending yourself in oblivion. And here's the painful part of this. Let's just use direct mail as an example. Let's say you choose a geographic farm. You've done your homework. You're confident that you can somehow become the brand name, all this gimmicky stuff that you guys believe in that particular geographic farm. So you're going to start mailing to that marketplace and you're going to mail it for how long? A year? A two? Three? When are you going to pull the cork on it? When are you going to decide, well, I guess this was a waste of time. I shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. The, once you start doing it, you're not going to stop because you're going to convince yourself that you just haven't done it long enough. And if you can't convince yourself when you call to cancel that particular service, they're going to say, you just need to do it for another six months. Another six months, you're going to see the results. And then you just keep on doing it because you did not run that uh, decision initially through real business filters. You did not ask the person trying to sell you the whatever, whether or not, like, how long does it take on average to see tangible results? What are the tangible results that you would expect me to experience by when? How do we know whether this is working? Whenever anyone gives you an answer that has anything to do with building your brand, they're lying. Okay? Remember that. Any answer that is not given that is a specific drill down, you spend this, you get this, don't do it. It's a waste of money. It's, they're just trying to appeal to your ego. They're just trying to appeal to your natural desire for look for shortcuts. We all look for shortcuts. When water's running down you know, a rocky cliff, right? It's always going to look for the path of least resistance. We all act like that. It's naturally, it's innate. And it's that's, you know, intuitively, that's a good thing because it'll help you to accomplish, you know, get to the goal in the, in the quickest. But you're not water and you're not running down a mountain. You are somebody who has to learn how to master the skills necessary so that you can earn the right to be of service to other people. And the longer you spend chasing all of these flaky ideas and spending your money, 
the worse off you're going to be when you finally have the epiphany that you shouldn't be doing any of those things in the first place. Now, I do want to say that when a lot of these ideas were initially hatched decades ago, direct mail, for example, or Teams, for example, or internet marketing, for example, decades ago, direct response marketing, it did work. When direct marketing came out, when it really became popular, and this was in probably in the late 80s, early 90s, it did work because not everyone was doing it, but mostly because the idea was not oversaturated. Now it is. Every Consumers are so used to certain types of marketing, they ignore it. That's the same reason I was telling you guys earlier that people don't read anymore. They read headlines and they read bullet points. And so the people writing the articles anymore don't even have to be very good writers. All they have to do is come up with good headlines. There are people that work for the big news outlets whose only job is to write the headlines or the titles of the articles. They don't write anything else. That's it. They're just copywriters for headlines, for titles. Isn't that interesting? Why? Because consumer behavior has changed. People are expecting quick you know, little douses of uh, information, and they're looking for shortcuts. Don't be like that. The real long-term ever increase, if you want real long-term ever increasing levels of success in your business and personal life, it always will come from doing what you don't want to do when you don't want to do it at the highest level. Stop fighting with that, guys. Stop trying to validate or invalidate that point because it's true. Intuitively, you know it's true because everything in life that you have that you hold dearest has come as a result of having to have done what you didn't want to do when you didn't want to do it at the highest level, right? You know this is true. So listen, guys, if you need us for anything, we're always here. We've always got your backs. We are actually, from a business and personal perspective, incredibly excited about the next year. And I hope you guys are as well. Look, there are going to be some headwinds, but really, who cares? As long as your skills based and you're focused on being a service to other people, let the aliens come and you know visit us. Who cares, right? <laughs> what difference does it make? Hey, you know what? Here's the thing. Aliens, if they were to come and visit us, they actually would probably need to buy houses. I mean, they're not going to want to stay up in their little, you know, their uh, flying saucers forever. <laughs> Some of you guys listening for the first time are thinking I'm crazy uh, because I said that. But it's a sort of a, an ongoing joke that Julie and I have because it does seem like there's more and more articles that are being released about alien visitation. And we just think it's hilarious that, of course, those articles are coming out in the year of COVID, right? <laughs> I mean, 2020, it might get wackier. I know. I don't know about you guys, but my cup is kind of full of wacky. I really choose to have the rest of this year be nice and smooth sailing. But I bet you we're going to be experiencing a lot more wacky doesn't matter. Just focused on being of service to other people and obviously focused on um, your skills. And you guys will be great. You'll be more powerful, more prepared than you can ever possibly imagine. And you're going to be confident. You're going to be, when you wake up in the morning, knowing every single day, when you choose to, which you will, you can set a pre-qualified listing appointment and you can take a listing every single day. When you know every single month, you can generate a consistent number of listings, which will generate a consistent number of closings, which will generate a consistent amount of income. Isn't that what you wanted? Isn't that the reason you got into the business? So why don't you attach closer to us and let us show you how to do that and stop chasing all these fairy tales about the things that are going to supposedly give you shortcuts to success. They don't work. If they did, don't you think the failure rate in real estate wouldn't be as high as it is? I mean, let's just look at it for what it is. If you guys need us for anything, reach out to me. My cell phone number, text only, is 512-758-0206. 512-758-0206. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.